Skyrocketing silver prices. Remember the original silver squeeze? Could we be setting up for silver squeeze 2.0? We have a guest today, the Illuminated Ape from the Reddit community, the Silver Degen Club. He's a founding member of the Silver Degen Club and a person who has done extensive research and come up with a strategy how we might be able to expose the silver market potentially cause another silver squeeze. Illuminated Ape, welcome to Ron's basement. Thank you. It's great to be in the basement. Well, it's our, it's our honor to have you here. And uh, we were talking before we, we started the show here that uh, I've done quite a bit of reading at your site, the Silver Degen Club, and I am just totally impressed with the depth and, and breadth of the knowledge that you have of what's going on in the silver market. Uh, what do you think? Uh, are, are we setting up potentially? Sounds like you might have a strategy to uh, to help uh, expose some weaknesses within the uh, within the silver market. Right. Uh, so I think where where we're going in a trajectory uh, for silver is that silver is a very needed commodity, and I'm talking a strategic need over even industrial need, uh, going all the way back to sort of the, I guess the 50s is really when it really ramped up that it, the technology for a silver battery has really started in the 40s, uh, right tail end of World War II. And, you know, we were putting these silver batteries in torpedoes, we were, we're putting them in missiles. And these, in my opinion, are military consumable and, uh, you know, they don't come back when they explode it. They don't come back when you sink in the uh, in the uh, the ocean. So over time, the uh, strategic value of silver rose, but our stockpile kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And through researching a lot of things, uh, that became really apparent. And it what also came apparent was the U.S. Mint historically relying on the stockpile of silver that has been depleted over time. It used to be that the Mint had to go right to what's called the Defense Logistics Agency of the Department of Defense that stored the strategic metal. Uh, that was the first place they would go to grab silver to make the Silver Eagle program. Uh, and back in 2002, it was depleted. Um, and they changed the rules so they could allow the Mint to get silver on the open market. But the Mint can only pay the average world price as dictated by law, and average world price really means uh, the spot price, you know, the general price of the world, what they pay for silver. So they're sort of locked into a corner right now, and that's really what Drain the Mint is trying to both expose them and exploit that legally, of course, you know, because they have to mint to demand. And... Uh, I don't believe that they have the silver to meet the public's demand, and this would go a long way to expose not only the shortages, but the manipulated price. Hmm. That, so that, that's interesting. I didn't know that prior to 2002, the U.S. Mint was able to kind of pull silver from a strategic stockpile that the U.S. government had. And then right. once so we, that was... We stopped. Go, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just to interrupt you. We started in 1968 for context with 168 million ounces in that stockpile and it's all gone. It's all gone. So so I have a question for you on this world average price. Uh, that's not spot, I imagine, it's spot plus some level of premium. Is that is that safe to say? Uh, the average world price is spot. Uh, okay. It's not really with premium. So they're getting the metal as like these bars, you know, that's just, that's the cheapest, you know, you can pull up the Comex sense, the cheapest price you can get. So they have to go with that cheap option unless they can get it from like the LBMA, but the Comex is closer. They're going to prop, they're going to take it from there more than likely. Um, and they have to pay the spot as dictated by the law of five or US code 30, Y to five, one, one, six, uh, section B subsection two. And that will tell you the exact, uh, it has to use the average world price as dictated by the most widely accepted commodity exchange. 
Okay. So, but ultimately they need what are called planchets. And uh, yeah. can you explain to the viewers what a planchette is? And my question for you, I don't want to hit you with too much at once here is, Sure. If the the mint acquires the 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 let's say a thousand ounce silver bar, do they then send that out to have it made into planchets? That's absolutely correct. So the sort of process they go through is they first have to obtain the silver spots. They would go to the commodity exchange, then they would take that delivery from the commodity exchange and send it right over to the Sunshine Mint, who, uh, for whatever reason has a complete monopoly on creating those planchets for the U.S. Mint. Uh, and Sunshine Mint is the bottleneck that shouldn't exist. So, as you know, they came out with a, a Type 2, and that, was, that came out in 2001 and amongst the squeeze, and that made no sense. Um, so they were going to increase the bottleneck so that, uh, you know, production almost slowed down with the switch over to these eagles. Um, if you were running a company, which, and you're already having production uh, issues, would you then throw another monkey wrench into the process? That's really Only the U.S. Sort of Mint would do that. <laughs> right, right, right. But anyway, to answer your question, yes, it, they have to create the planchets, but the Sunshine Mint has the contract to make the planchets. Okay, so you just cleared something up for me. One thing that didn't make sense to me, and maybe some of the viewers are, were struggling with the same thing. In my mind, the sunshine meant, um, well, in my mind, the mint, the U.S. mint, was just buying the planchets directly from the sunshine mint. Meaning, in my mind, the sunshine mint was going out, buying the metal from the COMEX or however they acquired it, then creating the planchets, and at that point, selling them to the U.S. mint. And, and, and as I was thinking like, well, if they, they can't do that for spot, but what you're saying is the mint, there's no reason they can't go out and get the silver. I mean, am I missing something? No, that's, that's absolutely correct. Uh, but they can't go and pay ridiculous amounts for the silver, right? Mm -hmm. They can only go by the average world price. Now, uh, you know, of course that doesn't count the refining costs, Oh, uh, they sure. go into creating the planchet, planchets and whatnot, but the base cost of the material has to be that spot. That spot. But but yep. I'm going to ask you an obvious question. Why why don't they go to the Comex <laughs> or the LBMA? Because that is, that's where spot is determined. Well, that's where they're that's where they're going. Uh, yeah. They're going and taking delivery of that metal from the Comex uh, or. You know, they're taking it from the DLA, you know, if they somehow right. were able to scrap up something. But for a major quantity, they're taking it off the open market. And that's a part of what drained the mint so powerful, because we're, if we're taking delivery right from the U.S. Mint, then they're forced to take delivery from the Colmex and drain it on our behalf. And I don't think the Colmex is going to change the rules on the government and to the fault on their delivery. No. Um, no, now it's, I, you really helped me this morning because now I can totally see, and I hope the viewers can as well, that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that with the mint taking the metal directly from, you know, them buying the metal and then providing it to sunshine Mint. uh, there's nothing that's, uh, I mean, help me illuminate it, ape, if I'm missing something, but there's nothing, uh, standing in the way necessarily uh, legitimately of, of them being able to provide uh, an adequate number of American silver eagles uh, equal to that which is demanded by the U.S. citizenry. Am I, am I missing something? No, that should be how the world works. It should be that straightforward. Now, what they keep telling us and what the market keeps showing is there's not a silver shortage or else, you know, supply to demand uh, mechanics would take over and the price would go up. The price is sticking where it is, and that's the red flag amongst all the information that we're seeing in this industry. Uh, so if we're not going to push a private institution like the COMEX to discover the price of silver for us because they're not incentivized because of maybe military coercion or maybe industry coercion, you know how they're pushing the whole EV uh, 20, they want it just 
redesign the whole world's power plant uh, and turn all the cars into EV, turn, you know, solar power over from coal. I mean, it's a whole inner hall, but they want to get it done in about nine or actually less than nine years. They want to get done in seven years now or less. And it's just a maddening amount. So where are these resources coming from? It's obviously coming from silver because that's the best generator of energy, the conductor of energy. It is like they can't find a better substitute for it. So they're incentivized to keep that price down so it can fuel all these industries to for all this EV takeover. Wow. Yeah, I know I, I was watching, uh, not to get off, off, off track here, but I was watching some clips someone provided from the... Uh... Chinese state media where they were talking to some of the re silver refiners over there and they were there there these managers at these refiners were throwing their arms up saying we need more silver <laughs> you know there's not <laughs> we we don't have enough silver and it's actually going to if something doesn't change uh it could um uh you know slow down the advancement of technology even and the advancement of you know mankind i guess you could say well, it really just depends where this, where the material is going. You know, it's definitely mm -hmm. not going, you know, in the majority of people's hands. You know, stacking community is still small. So from mm -hmm. a wider perspective, you know, it's definitely going into a majority of the military. The nuclear energy is a big one of them. And, uh, you know, just industry generally for the batteries that are, you know, going to be retaking this world. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting you say that because uh, as you know, I'm a silver enthusiast, obviously, my, my channel here is focused on silver and gold. Uh, mm -hmm. But you you hear, you know, I think it's easy for us to think that like when, when uh, bullion sales start to drop off, like they have, right, we had like a mad rush of people, you couldn't find silver, at least I couldn't hear in, in the area that I live in at local coin shops, when the little banking issue was occurring back in March and early April. And now the, the sales have kind of significantly slowed down. Um, and, and you think, oh my gosh, that's killing the price. And it does have an impact, but um, but I read some statistics that that agree with what you just said, that really the, uh, the stacking community matters, uh, but when you look at the other major sources of demand, industry, defense, uh, those are really, you know, account for a majority of the uh, of the of the silver purchases. Absolutely, and it's almost uh, scary uh, how much silver is being used. Let me just throw an example out. Um, we all know about the tomahawk missile. I think that's a very big talking point in this industry, and that's around an average of four hundred to five hundred ounces per tomahawk, and. There's been a lot of tomahawks that have been fired off, blown up, and they're not coming back. And that's really staggeringly bad statistic. But one that's even worse is about nuclear bombs. Now, these things, luckily, don't get blown up uh, as regularly as tomahawk missiles, but uh, they're still stored. They're not going anywhere. They're sitting in silos uh, or they're sitting in storage. Or, or if a nuclear submarine was attacked, it was sitting on the bottom of the ocean right now. And who knows what happened to that uh, silver. But for an example, the intercontinental ballistic patriot missile that one i found used are uh, uses for uh 24 000 pounds of silver for its Whoa. battery wow. and uh so they were aiming to make 100 of these they ended up only making 50 but just mm -hmm. that alone is just a ridiculous amount and that's one model of of ballistic missile how many models of missiles have we come out with how many are just stored in know, in in stockpiles waiting for something to happen i think a lot less given the last couple of years because of what's going on uh geopolitically with uh, all these different wars going on um mm -hmm. so we're giving a lot of munitions and stuff over it's like we're transferring our wealth when we when yeah. we as a country give away our bombs or our missiles or torpedoes we're transferring our wealth because it's it's they're made from precious metals. It's that's the craziest thing. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's the whole uh, supply demand dynamic that's going on, and I'm sure you've read the official Silver Institute numbers. Um, it's just it, you know it's it's crazy uh, to think 
uh, where the future silver is going to come from because, huh. and I'm sure, Sure, you know more about this than I do. I mean, I, I well, talk to mining I, company CEOs, and and it's hard to find silver. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was definitely. I was going to say, I definitely, I don't know about those uh, the statistics from the Silver Institute. I just, I just question how can you factor in, you know, what is taken from the military, either unclassified or classified, and. Uh, uh and account for it if it's been blown up or sunk to the bottom of the sea, or in the case of nuclear energy. Uh, uh, so there's a component in any reactor, at least the common ones that are called pressurized water reactors that make up about 60% of um, the general reactor designs worldwide. It's a yeah. design that came that Westinghouse came up with. Uh, mm -hmm. This design uh, utilizes what's um, control rods these things go into the reactor to control the level of reaction going on in the reactor so you don't get a chernobyl sort of blow up meltdown kind of event um and these rods are 80 percent silver they're in some cases 12 feet long or more uh they can they can you know the amount of silver that goes in them is between uh and i it's off the top of my head, I think it's 68,000 uh, 68, ounces minimum to 130,000 um, ounces. That that that, uh, that just, accounts for a few of the stackers out there watching right now, correct? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So just, and the really scary thing about this and why I just wanted to bring, bring it up because I don't really trust the statistics is because you know these control rods what they do is they absorb the neutrinos they absorb the radiation into them the excess radiation and they only have about a, a seven to eight year shelf life before the it's like a shell so the out, outer shell is steel and the inside which is the silver uh melts down and over time the outer steel can get cracked and that's no good you know so they have to take these rods out replace them with brand new ones and the problem with all that silver that they use is irradiated it's not coming mm -hmm. back for 400 years so how you don't do you, you don't want that in your that? stack right <laughs> no 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 it's almost like if you're worried about you know evil people giving you uh, irradiated silver it might be worth uh, getting a geiger counter um, right. hopefully yeah. that's not be not happening so so um, go ahead no oh uh, go ahead it's well, fine. when we when we think about a potential for the silver market to get squeezed or even just an event which uh facilitates the true you know the manifestation of the true value of silver whether we measure it in fiat dollars however we want to measure it mm -hmm. i think it's important i want to get your comments on this i think one mm -hmm. thing that doesn't get a lot of attention is the fact that the silver market on top of everything else is so small um, you know, about a billion ounces are produced every year. I have this little infograph that I can show. Uh, the little pink arrow goes to silver, and that that's twenty billion dollars worth of silver is is most of it's from mining, and then there's a, a fraction that comes from recycling. That big ball is crude oil, right? Uh, Two trillion, which I think is what a hundred or a thousand times bigger. Gold, mm -hmm. the gold market is over there. The gold market is 10 times bigger than silver. But the other thing to remember, if even if we're going to compare silver to gold, is that gold is not consumed. Any gold, you know, that 2 trillion, or I'm sorry, 200 billion in gold that's produced every year is stored. Very little of it is used for any type of industrial application. Most all of that silver is. So when we when we talk about uh, a movement like hashtag drain the mint, um, the, we'll, maybe we'll get into some of the details on that here. Uh, I think it's 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 from as we look at the context under which all this is happening, silver is not a huge market. I mean, compare it to the market cap of Apple Computer, or you know, twenty trillion dollars. Uh, it's big, don't get me wrong, but it's not like uh, it's a market. I guess what I'm saying is because it's not so huge it could be um, exposed a little easier. Am I off track on that? No, I think you're absolutely uh, uh, on the money. I mean, you, if you think about it, you know, that little tiny circle, that's what makes silver precious. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not an abundant material in our earth crust. And 
the, the way it stands right now, uh, we don't really have a uh, a big vein to just you know go ahead and um, mine um, and get a really good yield of silver from that mine. Most of the silver coming out of uh, new production is a byproduct of all these other more abundant uh, materials in the crust. And um, you know, going off what you're saying, you know, I've about you know maybe bringing more awareness because we are just a small little sliver of the industry. Well, it, it, it comes two ways. Yes, I think, you know, it's, it, we can, you know, like have them be awareness of that small little slice, but at the same time, there is a lot of money that will come down either from the government perspective or industrial perspective that want to keep the silver price as low as possible, even if we're running out of it because of what they're trying to accomplish with their individual or their industrial goals for the future. Um, and that's, that's a big problem. And I think, you know, just waiting around and stacking silver um, won't get what we need in terms of price discovery uh, because sitting on the sidelines of this is just too much money and too much influence trying to suppress our little stacking community, um, you know, because of this, the silver specifically is so needed. You know, you could probably stack pl uh, platinum or gold and have a better chance of um, uh, getting a return on investment on that unless, you know, because of how manipulated silver is. Um, but I do believe that our little group uh, can overpower the amount of uh manipulation both uh, mental and obviously in the market uh if we work together i've always been a proponent of you know if you get together with a group of like-minded people uh, that you believe and you hope for something it is nothing you can accomplish yep i agree with that 100 percent it is has the hashtag drain the mint movement officially started or is there a date that you're looking at or is it, is no, it underway it, it, it right has now? it is underway right now um i'm we're already seeing some some big moves uh premiums have actually started to come down um which i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take credit for a little bit for drain mm -hmm. the mint um because it was right afterwards you know, maybe it was a coincidental timing, but I don't believe in coincidences. And um, I think, you know, as as demand ramps up for these eagles, premiums are going to come down. I think the biggest problem with eagles the last couple of years that really sparked the premiums is that, you know, all these authorized participants, they have to go on allocation. The minimum amount of order is 25000 from the mint have these coins and uh, that's a lot of capital uh to sort of risk when you know there's a big time gap between when you order it and when you receive that product that also affects what these dealers can sell them for in order to either make a little profit off it or break even depending on if the price goes up or if it goes down if it was up when they bought it and it crashed down then they have to make up to that premium somewhere um, but if we, if, if we as apes eliminate the amount of uh, time that they're holding these eagles on their books, then the premiums, I think, will come down as a result of that. Interesting. Is, is there a catalyst or an event or a particular possible legal action that will um, that will force the Met to address this situation? Uh, that that they either claim force majeure, I guess they would do, or I or, I don't know if they can claim a force majeure, but I, I get what you're saying. Um, so eventually, uh, works. I'm expecting pushback from the government, uh, um, either being the fact that they haven't met demand in the past, um, and they probably won't meet it today, or in to deal for this uh, during the minute. And I hope they don't because it will allow us to amplify all the wrong that they're doing. Now, a lot of people I've heard look in the comments of both my sub and your community, they're like, what's going to force the government to actually follow the law? And 
I, I equate this to this, you know, uh, there's a lot of people breaking laws every single where, uh, for a, a good example would be someone in the privacy of their home doing heroin. Now, no one sees them do heroin, although it's really illegal to do heroin. They're not going to get in trouble because no one sees them do ha ha do heroin and there's no evidence or proof of them doing ha heroin. But as it stands right now, we're watching the marketing closely. We're talking to the bullion dealers. We're getting inside information. We're gathering all of this data that clearly shows that there is a demand and they're not going to be able to run away from the truth being, you know, thrown in their faces and timing wise, you know, I'm not, I don't want to get into too, too much politics, but the, for the fact that the primaries are coming, it's a very politically charged environment. And there is a lot of states like Alaska, Idaho, Nevada, that their economies depend on mining, or a lot of their jobs in their states depend on mining. And those silver, Idaho was a historically significant state for silver production in America. It's just, a, I think it was the biggest mine in the world at some point. Like, you know, there's a, a history here. Uh, especially with our country in mining silver, and we're going to utilize everybody in politics and get this word out and make it very aware and that this administration is basically breaking the law. And now, whether they're breaking the law intentionally or unintentionally is out for debate. But based on what I'm currently seeing, it looks like an intentional thing. And if a government is breaking its own lives, it's, I don't, I don't want to throw out that T word just yet, but it could, you know, topple down into a trees in like environment. It just depends on how, how far they want to push this. I'm prepared and my group is prepared to push this as far as it will go. And I think that is a game changer because never has and the government been pushed like this and also a hundred percent legally they're the ones that are going to be in trouble for this yeah yeah and 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 silver i can vouch silver enthusiasts are truly enthusiastic <laughs> there is yes there the silver community is uh i don't know what causes it it must be it must be something in the metal i got a little 10 ounce bar sitting next to me I, but i think it's injustice yeah. It's it's the fact that we see the market. It doesn't make any sense. And no. it took some time to figure out, you know, but we know re the reason why it doesn't make any sense anymore is because it's rigged. And it's only going to come from us, you know, making it known that it's rigged mm -hmm. for it to become unrigged. They're not going to do it for us. If, if someone wants to help the cause, the hashtag drain the mint cause, buy new American Silver Eagles current year yep. or the most current 2023. year? 2023. Now, I know some people may be confused about the hashtag being drain the mint. We're just asking for people to buy the 2023 brilliant uncirculized circularized deal. Current okay. uh, coins, the dollar coins, and not the ones that come in the box, that come in the capsule, that come with a certificate. Those are numismatic and they're governed by a whole different set of laws uh and they're really expensive so go with the cheapest option which is you know it does have a high premium you know i'm not gonna lie you know if it was a month ago or two months ago before you know i was you know i was sure about this plan i would say don't buy them they're too expensive but i think the reason why they're so expensive is because the government doesn't want you to buy them it's one of those, yeah. you know, those big buffs, you know, don't buy this, buy that generic stuff. Um, right. So yeah, it's, buy, a, buy an Australian kangaroo because it's $7 per coin cheaper or $8 or, you know. Well, right? the, sc the scary thing is, Rod, and I don't want to induce any sort of FOMO, but this is something that, you know, has been in the back of my mind as I've been researching all of this. The fact that we have no national stockpile and that soldier is so needed for military application, mm -hmm. it's a strategic metal. Now, Roosevelt took away gold because it was it was needed for the financial system. They couldn't they couldn't go without it. Now, right. if it's the same situation, just with the reverse of silver, 
it's very possible, at least on the table of possibilities, that confiscation could come about in our lifetime. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the push for generics or the push for foreign currencies, those are the things that got taken away from the gold confiscation. But the eagles do represent a, um, a safe haven from that because they represent a dollar each. The government likely will not take away your money. They won't take those away. I want to ask you a question based on what you just said and, and, and see if my theory is correct. I get a lot of questions from viewers uh, referencing the 19, I think it was 1933 Roosevelt uh, uh, gold confiscation. And is that going to happen again? Is that going to happen again? And the way I answer that question is, I don't think they'll confiscate gold now because- I don't think so either. They don't have to. They don't, they, they, back then you said this, and I want to point this out, uh, the, 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 the monetary system, we were on a gold standard. So if they need, they wanted more money, they needed to confiscate the gold. And then what they did, right, is turn around two weeks later and revalue the gold so that they could kind of print money. Is that, is that safe? So they don't have to do that now because they can, they can skip the whole gold part. They can just print money. Right. Printer go burr. Uh, they really don't <laughs> need to, uh, to, to do anything where confiscation gold for a financial system. Even if we were going to back that new cryptocurrency, central bank digital currency scheme with gold, right. I think there's so much gold in the world that it's not a problem. Um, yeah. Maybe they'll even revaluate it less because there's, I believe, definitely more gold in the world now versus silver because of all the industrial needs now gold like you were saying doesn't have a lot of industrial needs but for a, a electronic standpoint it's just used for anti-corrosion so if you take a cpu and you turn it over you see all those pins they're mm -hmm. gold color yeah that, that's actually gold it's probably about 14 karat gold and it's a very 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 minute scale uh, scale thin layer uh that is um basically covering up silver because silver is the best conductor. So in terms of an industrial need for gold, it's really only used for contact points and basically for anti-corrosion. Um, so you can see there's not really a lot of usages for that. Right. Whereas with silver, the, 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 the potential for a strategic, you know, or for potential for confiscation under the, under the premise of strategic needs that almost seems uh, more plausible. Not saying uh, you know, not not saying that it's imminent, but that that could be uh, more likely to to occur than than a future gold confiscation. Well, even if you think about, um, we know the World Economic Forum, the most uh, popular saying from the last couple of years is, "You will own nothing, and you will be happy." It's uh, an idea that they want to remove private property ownership, and that can I can only think of a couple of ways where you can transform a world where everyone loses ownership for private property, and it's going to be some sort of financial or economic catalyst in the downtrend that yeah. is going to cause that maybe you know you put somebody in a financial position where they had all this generic silver it was taken away um or they uh the dollar continues to collapse and we have a hyperinflationary venezuela-like situation and the government comes in and like hey you know uh we see you have a problem here uh we got a solution and don't mind that we may have already caused the problem to offer our specific solution but this specific solution is we'll make you whole if you decide it's okay for us to take away all your ownership all your ownership yeah. uh yeah, you know, rights. Anything, if you, com if you, you know. comply, if you comply. Exactly. Right? This is, yeah. this is hey, you, and I love the way you said that. Even though we created the problem, we now have a solution to the problem we created. Right. Wonderful. Well, if if well, people want to learn more, modus, go ahead. I'm, go yeah, ahead. I was just going to say that's been the modus operandi from any powerful, per a powerful entity for the last hundred years is in order to shoehorn something, they create a problem that allows that shoehorn. Think of like died 11, and then mm -hmm. we get the, the, pa the Patriot Act. Without that event, uh, either 
it was hoaxed or not hoaxed, doesn't matter. The Ulati weaponized that event in order to create um, a situation where we abandoned our rights and yeah. you know just gave away, which is just crazy to me. Yeah. Yep, yep, it's interesting. Well, since I have you and I have great respect for your opinions, I want to zoom out uh, and just ask you a question. When, when we look at the whole world now, Illuminated Ape, what I see, I'm mm-hmm. 53 years old. It feels like to me that we are uh, in a, in a, I guess, in a nutshell, I could say, a period of change and um, uh fighting and arguing to say it very simply amongst countries like i never remember in my life do you do you, am i am i seeing that correctly or or do you have a different view of the, of what's going on no i i i agree with you so over the last what was like 50 years or so mm-hmm. there's been a downtrend where it's resulted in more and more civil um uh- like divergences, uh, uh, divisions within mm-hmm. our, our society, where we uh, racism is at all time high. And I feel like back in the day, you know, it, it wasn't given so much power, you know, so at all these other events that uh, caused division within uh, a society, it's all on purpose. And I think it's charged by sort of the media. The media has been consolidated down to be owned by small and smaller and smaller amounts of uh, influence over the course of time. And you know, let me, let me, let me interject enough. one thing, illuminated, Abe, yeah. please not Ron's basement. I'm not part of that big conglomerate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. And that's why we're here. Uh, right, would, sorry. Definitely that, wouldn't that, want... that probably didn't warrant an interruption, but I couldn't help myself. No, no, it's definitely, it's good to tell your audience that you, you're going to stay independent throughout this uh, consolidation of media. But um, yeah, everything has an agenda is really what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah. And the agenda currently for the silver market is to keep us suppressed. And I'm just not down with that agenda anymore. And uh, I feel like the only way for us to get out of uh, this sort of dream that we're all in before, you know, stuff hits the fan is for us to get ahead of this uh, with real facts. You know, I've been diving into the past. I've been doing bigger and longer uh, deep dives than I've seen anyone in this industry before. Uh, so I think I have a lot of exciting things that are going to be coming out. Uh, over the course of the next month or so that I think is going to really blow the socks off uh, uh, what's going on in the world in terms of manipulating this price. I'm going to show that there's a lot more demand for, for silver than they let on. And uh, I think that that's intentional because the media, it's consolidated by the banks. The banks are sort of chorus or influenced by greater governments. You know, the military industrial complex is probably the most, the biggest industry on the planet. War is the biggest business on this planet, and it's sad. And not to get too philosophical on you, but if silver is that needed for war, uh, well, if we unrig this price, we may be able to cut down on the amount of war out there based on uh, draining the amount of precious metals that are in, in play. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in favor of that. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a silver lining to the uh pardon the pun to the drain the mint movement right it, uh, exactly and, you know it's yeah. it's all the silver is the silver manipulation is a part of a greater systemic problem and yeah. if we don't get on top of this then they're going to they're going to create a situation where silver is just extinct or very so rare that it's unobtainable in the future and based on how how much is needed or industry or technology or X, Y, Z, solar panels, whatever that silver is needed for. I just can't imagine a world where the silver doesn't exist. And it's almost very, very scary. Interesting. So, so we got to uh, get ahead of this. That's right. Yep. Yep. So if, if people want to get involved, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, put some links in the description below hashtag drain the mint. I would highly recommend that you head over to Reddit. Now, a lot of my viewers aren't familiar with Reddit, R-E-D-D-I-T. You go there and in the search bar, type in silver, Degen, D-E-G-E-N club. And then the way I like to describe it to, to my viewers is it's, it's no more complicated than going to Facebook or Twitter or any other number of websites. You can scroll down 
and you will be impressed with um, the quality of the information that's there. And even the, the posts that are made for entertainment, everything is silver oriented and um, uh, it just has a great feel to it. Illuminated Ape and I were talking, I was out poking around again. I go out there every day, but last night and there's uh, uh, just a, a wealth and breadth of information. If you're a silver, a silver enthusiast, you need to check it out and it's fun too. Well, we definitely try to make it fun, and thank you for that uh, praise, Ron. Uh, we try to do our best to make the subreddit uh, very focused on silver and precious metals. The sometimes there's gold conversations, and thinking about you, I, I let them pass, you know, you know, because silver mm -hmm. and gold, you know, they do go hand in hand with each other in terms of their precious metal stacking community. So it's really just one big club. For people yeah. that really love silver, that are really sick and tired of what they see going on in the markets and uh, want to become better informed so they can go out there and make the world better informed and maybe we can unrig this market together. Yeah, yeah. The, the other thing I want to throw in to the viewers is um, I sense and I believe that I'm 100% uh, 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 confident and true when I say this is that you guys... Uh, put a very high level of importance on ethics, I guess is a, is a, is a simple way to say it. Is that, uh, would you agree with that illuminated ape? I, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a big part of why we're here. So, you know, the reason why Silver DJ and club is even popular is because we exposed uh, wall street silver um some of their dirty dealings that had happened in the past not to get into a lot of detail mm -hmm. there but then we transitioned into exposing uh kinesis and basically we're here to try and be the better part of this and be better and make the industry better as we grow you know i think the old guard have gotten too comp comfortable with the sort of the age of fraud in this industry and mm -hmm. i'm tired mm -hmm. of it i'm tired of people getting uh scammed uh yeah. losing their their investments this is this is people's lives and livelihoods and you know silver d gen club it, with me doing a lot of deep dives and tell these companies that were want to expose bad actors so that you know people in the city people that are getting into stacking stay a stocker and yeah. you know don't get you know scammed and then lose all interest in it uh which is really really wrong in my opinion so we'll stand as the the bastion of uh of making this industry better and holding it accountable that sounds great yes trust is paramount right that's what i always say with my channel and my audiences uh, 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 nothing more important than me that, that the people that watch my videos, trust me, I'm not always right. You know, I mean, I, I don't have a crystal ball, and, but that what I'm saying, I genuinely believe. And I, I sense that's uh, absolutely the case with uh, everyone at the Silver, Silver Degen Club as well. Thank you, Illuminated Ape. Uh, you're just done a great job explaining what's going on and sharing some fascinating information about the silver market in general as well well it's a pleasure um all of the things that i talk about don't get enough attention so i mean it's good to get the stuff out there gives the industry something new to talk about and i think it's more on point to what they should be talking about and making aware um because it's uh the military the energy and just the changing world around us is um is pushing silver down and we need to push it up yeah so military gotta, gotta call them out military energy solar electronics i mean those started popping into my mind as you were talking i mean yeah silver needs to be much higher much higher i don't i don't mind paying next 100 bucks for a computer uh but these companies do we just gotta force them to to understand that what this metal is really worth so before it's gone forever in my opinion all right, my friend. I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure, Ron. Thank you for hosting me in the basement. And you have a great, great rest of your day. And since it's 4th of July tomorrow, have a great holiday. Okay. Thank you, sir.